Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back with a highlights video of my recent trip to Japan for 11 days. On this trip, we go to Tokyo, Osaka, and also Kyoto, taking in a bunch of local culture, eating a ton of great Japanese food, going to arcades, and of course, lots and lots of game hunting. And like I mentioned, this is the first video of two. Now the second video will come out just a couple days after this one. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, the day has finally arrived for us to go to Japan, and my wife and I are rushing to the airport to meet up with Kinsey and her boyfriend, Tony. So what's the plan for today? So today, we are flying to Tokyo. Yay! We're so excited. We have the tiniest of tiny layovers in Portland. <laughs> yeah. And then once we land in Tokyo, we hop a train to Ueno, find our Airbnb, and then my first stop is to get some takoyaki. That's my whole goal for the day. I don't know what takoyaki is, but <laughs> I, I want some. You do. So now I settle in for a long, long flight. We're gonna head down to Portland real quick, and then from there, pick up some more passengers, and then we are on our way crossing the Pacific Ocean to Japan. And it's a long 10 hour flight. And oh my gosh. You know, I'm a big guy, I'm six foot four, so sitting in coach for that long is pretty brutal, but we're very excited once we approach the island. Now I said Tokyo Airport, but technically we landed at Narita International Airport, which is almost an hour outside of Tokyo. So the very first thing that you need to do is get on a train and travel into the city. And this is a theme that you're gonna see throughout our travels in Japan because we use a lot of public transit to get around. Once we get inside Tokyo, the next step is to get to the Airbnb. And I have to say, I am super glad that we traveled with Kinsey because She's been studying Japanese for several years now. She's been to Japan before, and she was hugely, hugely helpful in making this whole trip just very seamless. I mentioned the Airbnb because one of our goals for this trip was to try to do it as cheaply as possible. It can be very expensive to get to Japan, and we wanted to be smart about it. And so this Airbnb only cost us $60 a night per person. That's really cheap for Tokyo. Now it's not, the nicest place. It's not a four star hotel, but we're not going to be there that much. We are all about exploring the city and having fun in Japan. And so this was perfect for us. It was in a great location. It was safe. It was clean. Yeah, we were, we were excited. So you've been here like what, half an hour? And what'd you find? Beer vending machine. <laughs> Which How one old you? are you? <laughs> oh yeah. Old enough. <laughs> Nice. When people talk about Japan, they always mention the vending machines and they are right. They are everywhere. They're super convenient. You can get pretty much everything you need. I think we need to have these in the US. We are at a takoyaki stand, which is octopus dumplings. And we're in Ameyoko and so many YouTubers have gone here and they look like the best octopus balls ever. Yep, we are jumping right into exploring Tokyo. And keep in mind, this is after a long 10 hour flight and Japan is 16 hours ahead of Seattle. Oh man, I didn't know what was going on, but I was having a blast. It didn't take long for Kinsey to recommend that we check out a local game store. And the first one we stumbled into was Hard Off, which I believe is part of Book Off. This is a chain of stores that sells nothing but used merchandise. And so this is my very first experience walking into a Japanese game store. And right away, you see that there's just a little of everything. It's kind of amazing. A lot of these stores in Tokyo are very vertical. So depending on what floor you visit, you'll see different merchandise. For instance, here you see a bunch of electronics equipment and also musical equipment. And the first thing you notice right off the bat is that almost everything is sealed with cellophane almost like they're brand new. This is a brilliant concept because everything stays very dust-free, 
very new looking. For this first store, I didn't really buy much. Honestly, I was really jet lagged and really just trying to take it all in and kind of see what's out there, but don't worry. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go nuts buying stuff here pretty soon. Thank you games already. <laughs> All right, well, that's a good start to our Japan trip, but tomorrow we're gonna hit it hard. So we're gonna head back to Airbnb and try to get some sleep. Breakfast time. Where, where are we? We're at Lawson, which is a convenience store chain here in Japan, and it's awesome. And they have the strawberry. <laughs> I don't know if you know this about Japan yet, but their convenience stores are legendary. They're nothing like how we have in the United States because yes, you have all the cheap stuff, the food that you probably shouldn't be eating, but they also have amazing fresh food and deli sections that frankly are really legit. I mean, you will see Michelin star quality food in convenience stores. And so we're a little bit early. Most of the stores that we wanna to go to just yet are not quite open. So we decided to go to Lawson's here and get a bunch of food and then head to the park and check it out. Ueno Park is kind of amazing because it's this huge park in the middle of Tokyo. Tokyo is this massive city of 13 million people and you can just wander into this park and see a bunch of nature and water. And of course it made a great spot to have some breakfast. Japan has a lot of video game culture. And so right off the bat, Kinsey spotted some mochi in the shape of Kirby and couldn't help herself, but tore right into him. All right, we got some food in us. We're well rested. Now it's time to head over to Akihabara. Now Akihabara for those that are video game nuts like me, well, you know this area because it is world famous. You can find video games here, anime, manga, computer stuff, so much more. And I have to say it was a little overwhelming. So thankfully Kinsey had planned our entire day out. And one of the first places that she wanted to hit up was called SoftMap. And yet again, I am blown away when I walk in here because I see a wall of PlayStation Vita games. It's so amazing to see so many games released for a system that's basically considered to be a failure in North America, but not in Japan. I also start noticing on the top of all these aisles are all of these collector and special editions that I don't think we ever got in the US. It's at this point when I start thinking about my friends back in the States who might be interested in some of this stuff, and I bust out my phone, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and text him. I'm like, oh, wait, we are 16 hours ahead of those guys. So I have to start thinking about the time difference when I'm messaging, like say Reggie to ask him if he's interested in one of these special editions. It's, it's kind of weird to be that far ahead in the future. It takes a little bit of time. You know, you have to get used to that. I definitely like SoftMap quite a bit. It was a cool start to our game hunting day. The store tends to lean, at least it feels to me, a little bit on the newer side of stuff. So if you're looking for a PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 exclusives and limited editions, this is a great store for that. All right, so first game store we walk in, well, I guess second, whatever. First one of the day. And I got the Dragon Quest Slime Ooh, 2DS. That is cool. Ooh, and it's even a little slimy on the inside. It's adorable. I had to get it. How, do, how are you showing it right now? All right, and then I also got, and the reason I got this, because one of my favorite series, way more games came out in Japan. So this is Rocket Slime 3, and I love Rocket Slime. I also got Mario Basketball, because the cover's awesome. <laughs> What'd you get? I got an Evangelion game for the PS2. I got what I think is the first or precursor to the EDF games. Um, and I got Big Box PC. Those are so cool. I got Ease One Complete. Ease Two Complete. And Ease Eternal. 
all for how much? Well, those were cheap. Super cheap. <laughs> Excellent. Good score. We've only just begun, and the next place that Kinsey recommends we check out is called Surugaya, which is also in Akihabara. So many of these places are just within walking distance. It's awesome. This store sells a bunch of stuff, including vinyl figures and stuff like that, but down in the basement, in the underground area, is where all of the good stuff is. Now, this is one of the first stores where I really started to feel a bit claustrophobic. Again, remember that I am a big guy. I'm six foot four and yeah, a little overweight, and I could barely fit down some of these aisles. It was pretty funny, but man, I am determined. I am on a mission. I will find video games. I also have to apologize. I'm looking a little rough here because, well, I am very jet lagged, but nothing's gonna stop me. I'm buying that. When it comes to handhelds, Japan got a bunch of colored variants, especially for the PSP and the Vita, so I've been on the lookout for several of them. The day is young with so many video game stores yet to explore, but we're starting to get a little bit hungry, and I love ramen. So Kinsey has hunted down a great ramen place in Akihabara. And this is another place where I felt like a freaking giant. I mean, this was a ramen place that probably seated maybe 10 people total. And <laughs> I mean, I barely fit on the stool. They actually had to bring in another sleeve for the table so that we could all fit around it. But as you can see from these photos, the ramen was legit. Oh my gosh. It was so worth the uncomfortable seating to eat this amazing ramen. Not far from the ramen restaurant is another Surigaya gaming store, so we had to check it out. Now this store was definitely packed from the floor to the ceiling in a very, very small space, but the stuff you would find in here was pretty cool, including these arcade boards. These immediately caught Tony's eye because he's a big arcade board collector. I also found some big box PC games. Now this is something that you can sometimes find at Japanese game stores, but they're definitely hit and miss and they're almost always towards the floor, almost like most people don't care about them, but I certainly do. This particular visit actually was fairly short because we knew we we're gonna come back in a couple days. See, this store is right next to another famous Japanese store called Beep. And Beep, unfortunately on this day was closed. So we knew we we're gonna come back. So this particular run through of the store was just really quick. We're at Sudugaya and yeah. we just stopped in quickly, but even in the small amount of time, got pop a music controller, Animal Crossing for less than a dollar. Ooh. Sorry. Ooh. Two copies of the Sailor Moon fighting game on the 3DO. Very cool. Evangelion on Sega Saturn. And then one more thing. Surprise, surprise, Sailor Moon. <laughs> it's at this point that we took a train back to the Airbnb to drop some stuff off and kind of relax a little bit because we had a long night ahead of us. And once we were all rested, well, we were back out on the town. Everybody who talks about retro gaming in Tokyo always mentions Super Potato. And yes, we are going to check it out. So the thing about Super Potato, I recognize almost immediately after walking around for a bit, is that it kind of felt sort of familiar. And that is because it really reminds me of Pink Gorilla Games in Seattle. That's the store that Kelsey is a co-owner of. As a matter of fact, I got my phone out and I messaged her and I sent her some photos. I'm like, this feels like Pink Gorilla. And she responded to me, she's like, yeah, that's the original design or idea behind Pink Gorilla was to feel like Super Potato in Japan. And one thing I've noticed about almost all of these retro gaming stores is that they have just an amazing amount of merchandise jammed into these small spaces. And it covers just about every generation of consoles. It's very impressive how much stuff they jam in here. It's, it's claustrophobic, <laughs> but it's also really cool because you know, everywhere you look, you're just discovering something new and interesting. A fun little bonus to discover at Super Potato was at the top floor, a little mini arcade. So this is just 
uh, operation is unconfirmed, so just untested, no controller, no anything. But it was only 780 yen. That's so, good deal. Worth it. <laughs> it's day three, and uh, jet lag is still kicking our butt. That 16 hour time difference is brutal. It takes a while to really get used to that. Uh, today we're going to Asakusa. And so there's like a big shopping street. We can see Tokyo Sky Tree. And there's also the Asasi, Asasi, Asahi Beer Tower. <laughs> Yummy. So we'll be doing that. It's gonna be fun. Beer. That's right. For today, Kinsey has planned for us to take in a little bit of local Japanese culture. Can't always be about video games, can it? So the first stop is this open market street that is sitting next to a really cool temple. Now, I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't know anything about Japanese temples, but it was cool to see because it was big, colorful, full of people, all this activity going on. It was definitely a really neat temple to check out. And then from there, we're able to walk a couple short blocks away over to the waterfront and then head up to the Asahi Beer Tower. And as you can see, it was just a perfect day for walking around Tokyo. As a matter of fact, this is a great time of year to go to Tokyo because it wasn't too hot, you know, and it also wasn't too cold. I mean, I actually took pants with me, but I didn't end up wearing them because I didn't need to. I had basically shorts on every single day. We are at Kuda Sushi, and it is kind of like a dollar conveyor belt sushi place that every five plates, because you put them in here, then you get to play a mini game and you might win a prize. Prize is more sushi. Prize is more sushi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone wins. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Like Kinsey said, this is a conveyor belt style sushi place that is really inexpensive and pretty high quality. Not the best, but it was decent. And like she said, every five plates that you insert into the little slot there, you get a chance to win a prize. I've never experienced anything like this before and it was actually a lot of fun. Ooh, that looks good. Okay. Right? Although we don't need to win more food, let's be honest. Come on, you guys! Yeah, I need to do it. Yeah! So it only took us buying 30 plates of sushi. <laughs> Was it worth it? Eh, I'll let you be the judge. What neighborhood is this? Shinjuku. Oh. It's cool. It's real cool. Now it's time for some Japanese insanity. Have you heard of the robot show and restaurant before? I had kind of heard of it, but this is something that Kinsey planned and she's like, you gotta do this at least once when you're in Japan. And she was so right. This is, this is bonkers. So this is, uh, <laughs> It's really funny, I'm sitting here recording this going, how do I describe the robot restaurant? It's crazy. Look at this toilet! This is how you are greeted when you walk in the door is all of this madness that goes on with this show. To be honest, it's actually designed for tourists and it's completely over the top. I'm not even really sure what it's about, but basically it's a show It costs about 50 US dollars and it's very intimate. You can see right here that I'm actually on the front row and these people are performing right in front of me. It reminds me of a Vegas show, but also a rock and roll show. Maybe if you were on drugs or something, <laughs> it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty out there. The entire show is about 90 minutes long and it's broken up into different acts. And it's almost like they're traveling through time. There is definitely a story here and it's very inspired by Japanese culture and pop culture, manga, video games. 
as you can see by these footage here, like it's just insanity. It's uh, it's crazy. You have to experience it because I've never seen anything quite like it. So that's gonna do it for part one and this video of my trip to Japan, but don't worry because I've got seven more days in Japan. So in the next video, I'm gonna go to Osaka. I'm also gonna go to Kyoto, and then we're gonna come back to Tokyo. And there is a lot more game hunting, a lot more of the culture of Japan. There's a lot more to show. And also in that second video, I'm gonna show you every single thing that I picked up. I haven't really covered in detail all of that in this video because we just got to Japan, but in the next video, I'm gonna show you all 26 games that I picked up as well as the three consoles. So you're definitely gonna watch that and that's gonna come in just a couple days. Also, let me know if you have traveled to Japan. I would love to know what your thoughts are on going to Japan and what you thought of this video. Please post a comment down below. And as always, guys, I wanna thank you very much for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.